Let us try to understand how to apply the compound interest formula to find the future value or the amount. The formula as you know is A equals to P times 1 plus I to the power of N. Here A is the amount which you get in future and therefore it is also called future value at times. P is the principal amount which you invest. I is the interest rate for the compounding periods expressed in decimals and n is number of compounding periods. So number of compounding periods will really depend on the type of compounding. If the compounding is quarterly then there will be 4 in a year, right? So if there are 5 years then 4 times 5 and i, the interest during the compounding period will be also calculated because normally you are given interest per annum. So if the compounding period is quarterly, you have to divide that interest rate per annum by 4, right? So this exercise will help you understand it in more details. Question is, an investment earns 6% per annum. Calculate I and N when the interest is compounded and these are the different options given to us. So we'll explore each one of that and then I think it will be absolutely clear to you how to use this formula. First one is annual for 5 years. Now when we say annual that means compounding period is 1 per year. right? Since compounding period is 1 per year and we have 6% per annum as the interest rate so that 6% will be applied per year. But we have to always write the decimal value. That means 6 over 100, correct? Which is equals to 0 0.06. Now as far as the compounding periods are concerned, 5 years. In every year, once. So it be 1 times 5 or 5 times 1. That means 5 compounding periods, right? Now let's look into the next option in which investment earns 6% per annum and is compounded semi-annually for 4 years. Now when we say semi-annually, then it means twice a year. So this interest rate, which is 6% per annum, should be divided by 2. So what we get here to calculate I is 6%, that means 6%, and then you have to divide this by 2 or I could multiply the denominator by 2, right? Times 1 over 2. So that becomes your interest rate for each compounding period. So that means it will be 0 0.03. So that is decimal value of the interest rate when it is compounded semi-annually for 4 years. 4 years is number of terms. Now 4 years means 4 years and every year twice. Then 4 times 2 gives us 8. So n value is 8 for us. So whenever you apply this formula for semi-annual you have to multiply the number of years by 2 because every year it is going to be compounded twice. Part C is investment earns 6% per annum compounded quarterly for 3 years. Quarterly means you have to divide this by 4. 6% per annum that means 6%, 6 over 100. Quarterly means one fourth of this, right? So you do one fourth of this. One fourth will be zero point half of this, right? One five. Let me write right. Normally you should use calculator. Calculate these values. Quarterly for three years. That means every year four times. So the value of n is twelve. Correct. Okay? So that is how we have to calculate the values of i and n, right? So, I hope that's absolutely clear. Now, the next one is when it is compounded weekly for two years. Weekly, there are 52 weeks in a year. So, we'll divide this 6 over 100, 6% per annum, by number of weeks, which is 52. So, that be 1.06 divided by 52. And that gives us 0. Point, or let me write the fraction value itself, which is better. We'll use 3 over 2600 which is kind of simplified form of this fraction, right? So we'll use this value. Now weekly for two years. So 
for 2 years means 52 times 2. Do you see that? So 2 years times number of times it is compounded. So 52 times 2, 104. So n value will be 104. The last one here is daily for a year. Daily means this year, every year is 365 days. So divide by 365. Okay. So we have 0 0.06 divided by 365. That gives us, let me write fraction value itself, 3 over 18250. Correct? Now, since the interest is applied daily for a year, so it will be 1, that is 1 year times 365. So, N value will be 365. So, that is how we have to calculate I and N values in the formula. And once we know principal amount, we can find the future value or the amount which it will be worth after the compounding period. Okay. I hope that helps to apply and understand the given formula. Thank you and all the best.